So as I said in the previous video, I want to make these consumer threads. Zero, one, two, three, four. I could make up to as many as I want to. Ideally, you have enough to keep the processor busy, but not more than that. Um, so that's going to be my consumer threads, and then I have this box that likes to spit out random numbers. And somehow these threads got to figure out well, which numbers they're going to grab, which numbers they're going to add, and so on and so forth. We don't want uh, two threads grabbing the same number. For example, if zero grabs uh, zero and one, thread zero grabs five and one here, and thread one grabs two, and thread two decides to grab one and four because it didn't thread two didn't coordinate with thread zero very well. Then the sum's going to be zero is going to say five five plus one is six. One's going to say is two plus nothing is two. Then two is going to say one plus four is five, and six plus two plus five is thirteen. But actually, five plus two plus one plus four is twelve. All right. So this is the correct answer. This is the incorrect answer. We want the correct answer, but the way we're going to have to do that is have some thread coordination where these threads don't step on each other's toes. So first things first, let's do a producing thread. I'm going to uh, put that away for now. Probably pull it back. Use it a little later. I'm going to static void. Produce. I know I'm doing everything static here. The, the threads work on instance function methods as well. Uh, produce numbers. What I'll call produce produce numbers. That doesn't have anything to do with the produce aisle in the supermarket. Again, okay, we need um as always in order to make th make data and share data, we need some sort of a uh, uh, data structure which we can share. That in the last videos I used an array. This one I'm actually going to use a uh, queue. Q U E U, it's a Q. I can't remember how to spell U E U E. I can't remember if that's it. Q of int control dot using system dot collections dot generic. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Q structure, uh, go look at the data structures videos. But essentially, the Q it's the British term for a line. Basically, you want, we're going to have threads put numbers into the Q, and then the consuming threads is, are is, are going to pull the threads, the numbers off the other end of the queue. So let's just call this numbers. I'm going to say new queue. And we're also going to need a static number, random number generator. So put that there. And then produce numbers. I'm just going to, uh, now these threads, they, they go extremely fast. I'm going to slow them down using thread.sleep so we can comprehend what's going on here. Uh, I don't think in nanoseconds, neither do you, I don't think. And so We'll just uh, slow this down a little bit. And we're going to do 25 numbers. Um, and then in here, let's say numbers.nq ran.next. Let's keep the numbers that we're nqing down to something understandable. So between 0 and 9 inclusive. Uh, and so we nq a number, and then let's say thread.sleep for somewhere between 0 and 1 second. All right. So produce numbers is pretty straightforward. Produce numbers with this queue, it's just going to say ran.next. So put a 5 on the queue, put a 2 on the queue, put a 9 on the queue, put a 1 on the queue, put a 1 on the queue, put a 4 on the queue, and that so on and so forth. And then the consumers are going to come and pull these numbers off, 5, 2, 9, 1, 1, 4, and add them up and make their individual sums. If I bring this uh, back up, remember that thread 0 added 5 and 1, so it kept an individual sum of 6. And thread 1 only got number 2, and so it kept 2. Thread 2 should have only added 4, but but it added 1 and 4. And so, anyway, each thread needs to keep its uh, array of summations, just like we did in the previous example, where, where we take this array and add up all the numbers to get the final result. So we better add that array into our example as well. Um, static. Uh, let's do actually const int num... I'm looking C++ this. num threads. Uh, we'll say we'll just say three. Keep it simple for our purposes, our learning purposes. And then static int sums. Oh wait, int array sums. Gets new int array. The number of threads, like so. Okay. And remember when I call new on an array here in C sharp that all these slots will be initialized to zero. All right, so produce numbers. It's pretty simple. NQs all these items. 
And then we're going to need um, a method to consume them. So static void uh, sum numbers. And we're going to do this the totally dangerous way. And this is going to, what I'm about to show you is the completely wrong way to do it. But it, it'll kind of bring some concepts home, I hope. I'm going to say, um, let's see, date time, start time, gets date time dot now. And then I'm going to say wall date time dot now minus the start time dot seconds is less than 10. So basically I'm going to allow this consuming thread. It's just going to say just churn for 10 seconds. And if it gets a number, great. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But it's just going to literally burn up my CPU power in the background um, trying to pull numbers off this queue. I'm going to say if numbers dot count is not zero. Okay. Um, then we want to take that number and add it to our sum. Well, we're probably going to need a sum here. Let's say int uh, my sum got zero. We'll put that there. And then down in here I'm going to say sum plus, no, I call it my sum, sorry. My sum plus equals uh, uh, numbers, numbers, uh, dot dq. All right. And then, so we're going to churn and burn for 10 seconds. Uh, and then when we're done, we're done, we need to stick my sum. If you remember, I need to put the sum, the, like thread zero has to stick the six here. The one's got to put the two here. Uh, two's got to put the five here. We got to stick this sum in the uh, sums array. Well, we forgot our object. I'm going to say thread number here. Uh, that's, that's the thread number, zero, one, two. We're going to pass that in right there. So then we can say um, sums sub cast that back to an int thread number gets my sum. All right. So that line of code there is going to stick the the sum in there. Now there's a lot of problems with what I've done here, and I haven't really talked about them yet. I'm going to talk about them in future videos, uh, just immediately coming up. But but this is a rather naive way. This is how I would have done this as a brand new programmer. I would have coded something up like this and say, hey, uh, you know, I know it's going to take, uh, well, we're doing 25 numbers. We're, I really should wait maybe even up to 100 seconds here because I know this, this, this could take, at tops, it could take 25 seconds. So I guess we could say 20, 26 seconds. But, but let's, th just to make this example go low or faster, I'm going to say, let's do 10 numbers and bring that down to... Uh, we'll do 11 seconds. Okay, so this is a naive way of doing it. I would have totally done this as a brand new programmer. I know that this is going to, at max, it's going to take 10 seconds. So we'll just roll in the background and um, keep queuing and, or keep querying and querying, saying, hey, is there anything? Hey, is there anything? Hey, is there anything? Hey, is there anything? Um, I'm going to keep doing that until my time's passed and then be done and send it out. That's This is poor man's threading synchronization technique. Do not do what I'm doing here. I'm going to totally improve this in the future videos. But hey, it's an approach. It could probably work. So in the next videos, we're going to start this machine up and uh, massage it a little bit to get a little bit more professional with it.